I'm Jim Perkins, General Manager, Chevrolet Motor Division. I know firsthand that Carvet ownership can be a very special experience. And to my mind, there's no better expression of Chevrolet's total commitment to quality and owner satisfaction than our 1990 Carvette. You know, we're real proud of it and of what the Carvette nameplate has come to represent. Outstanding engineering, careful craftsmanship, memorable performance, and what's simply a unique, one-of-a-kind driving experience. We've been pleased to have this opportunity to tell you more about the 1990 Corvette and to share with you this information on how and why it performs as it does. It's a great car, and we know you're going to enjoy it to its fullest. If there's ever a question about your car, we provided you with information on where you can turn for help. I can assure you that the entire Chevrolet organization and your dealer is standing behind you and your Corvette and the many miles of carefree driving that awaits you. We thank you for your business and for your support. Corvette for 1990. Today's testimony to a nearly 40-year-old tradition of automotive excellence and excitement from Chevrolet. This will be an in-depth look at this legend on wheels, rightfully called the world's best production sports car. Always exemplifying the most advanced concepts of automotive designers and engineers, always leaving an indelible and unforgettable mark with each of its totally unique faces, always providing its owners with a highly personal statement of achievement and attainment. With roots going back to 1953, Corvette has stood alone as a unique expression of Chevrolet power and performance. And since its beginning, Corvette has assimilated and perfected knowledge gained in the crucible of competition at Sebring, Pebble Beach, Watkins Glen, Daytona, at Le Mans, Elkhart Lake, Riverside, on road courses and ovals, Corvette has proved its mettle to the point it's now in a class by itself. Corvette against Corvette. In this program, we'll be taking a detailed look at the 1990 Corvette. Throughout the program, you'll see this time coding device in the corner of your screen. Using the index on the video cassette cover, you'll be able to fast forward to specific segments as you wish. In our program, you'll be hearing first-hand perspectives from the people responsible for the design and engineering of today's Corvette, and from a performance driving expert who is also the principal organizer of the Corvette Challenge, and from the proud owner of a 1990 ZR1. Really, I'm very proud and excited to be the owner of a new ZR1 1990 Corvette. It's, it's a winner. I know Chevrolet has helped me over the years, and the things they've done, I can't thank them enough. The first time I pushed the throttle down on the Indy V8 engine, I knew we had a winner. And I know we've got a winner here with the ZR1. So welcome to the Corvette Club. Let's start where the eye starts, with Corvette's distinguishing overall design. That's the responsibility of Corvette chief designer John Cafaro. Uh, the Corvette has to be the best possible uh, car, the best effort, the best engineering, the best design. Everything goes into that, that car. And uh, that's really what the owner's getting. He's getting the best that uh, we can do at GM and at Chevrolet. The heritage of the Corvette is very, very important. Uh, it's foremost in our minds. Uh, the fellows that we have working on the Corvette in our studio uh, have been working on Corvettes since the 60s. And, uh, they're enthusiasts. They, they go to the swap meets. They know what the customers uh, are looking for. And, and you can see it. When you see a new Corvette, uh, if it doesn't have a name on it, you can still tell that it's a Corvette. The flowing fenders and the, uh, the lines of the car, the four taillights, are all Corvette traits. It's a very graceful uh, design. It's, it's not overly pretentious. It's, uh, it really is a thoroughbred. It's lean. Uh, like an Olympic diver or like a thoroughbred racehorse. That's really how we approach it. It's, uh, it's a very integrated, uh, functional design. The clamshell hood design for, is a very, very uh, dominant feature on the car. And what that does is uh, 
makes the car easier to work on, but also exposes really all the, uh, the new technology that's in the car, the aluminum uh, wishbones, the, uh, the engine is uh, very, very exposed. And uh, to the enthusiast, I think that's very important. This is the Mossport Road Course near Toronto. It's home for the John Powell Motorsport Advanced Driving School. Let's hear why Corvette is the vehicle of choice for his precision driving school. One of the things I like about Corvette is the available performance from an integrated car. For a production car, it has outstanding braking capability. Massive rotors, twin piston gallopers, and they're all balanced with an anti-lock braking system, which is world class. The most important function of all is when you balance that with the power and the handling is that you've got more in reserve. There's more performance in this car than I'll ever need unless I'm on the racetrack. I reckon my time is valuable and I can't stand it when a car's down. My Corvettes don't go down. I like that. It's a tough car and the service is easy. But you know, these are very sophisticated cars electronically. They have a new GM tech line, computerized automotive maintenance system, and that's the key to the whole darn business. You can't leave it to guesswork. Throughout Corvette's long history, it's had only two chief engineers. First, the legendary Zora Arcus Duntov, who guided it through its initial development from an auto show idea car to a production vehicle. And on Duntov's retirement in 1975, Dave McClellan, who cut his Corvette teeth under Duntov's direction and has led the Corvette engineering team ever since. Let's spend a few minutes with this Corvette brain trust as they discuss their work on the 1990 model. Besides Dave McClellan, the team includes Jeff Yaknin, Corvette engineering business manager, Jerry Fenderson, chief body engineer for Corvette, Doug Robinson, Corvette Technical Manager, Jim Miniker, Corvette Powertrain Systems Manager, and Mike Andalora, Corvette Chief Electrical Engineer. They're joined by Rich Seppos, Executive Editor of Car and Driver Magazine. Every generation of Corvette uh, has been followed very closely by people like myself in the automobile uh, business, in, in the journalism business, and uh, it brings up the subject of the 1990 model and where things have evolved to right now. So Dave, I'd like to ask you, for this year, what was the engineering mission that you and your people set out to accomplish with the 1990 models? Well, the first thing, Rich, is we can't forget all this heritage either. You know, we're immersed in it every day and it's, it's part of our Corvette lifestyle, if you will. So what we do for the 90 car is really carrying on that rich tradition of what Corvettes have always been and uh, taking one step forward. The 90 Corvette really represents uh, uh, another culmination of bringing together a whole bunch of exciting technologies and embedding them into a car that we're selling to our customers and, and we're really excited about that. Now I just drove the 90 Corvette and uh, you can't mistake the fact that when you get into it it's a completely different car. The interior is all new. Why don't you uh, Tell me a little bit more about what you had in mind when you uh, completely refurbished this thing. Uh, the strategy uh, behind the 1990 interior is to provide the customer with a softer looking interior, kind of cocoonish and womb-like. We also uh, plan to give the customer added occupant protection with the addition of the airbag system, which is standard uh, for the 1990 Corvette. Well, the whole interior is completely different in the sense that we've got all new door trim, center console, instrument panel. As Jerry said, we've gotten to the a womb like interior, a jet cockpit fighter environment almost. Uh, all the gauges are now lit up for easy finding in the dark. The instrument cluster and driver information center to its right are designed to let you know at a glance how the car is running. Let's start with the black and yellow instrument cluster utilizing liquid crystal displays. At its center, the speedometer shows speed in either miles per hour or kilometers. Pushing in on the English metric button on the trip monitor panel to the right of the center instrument cluster determines 